Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com, and this is Center Seat, my Star Trek podcast. Welcome to this episode of Center Seat. Uh, this episode, we are going to be talking about Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episodes 4 and 5, No Win Scenario, and Imposters, respectively. And joining me on this quest is my uh, Star Trek Picard Season 3 co-host, Daryl Taylor of the Taylor Network of Podcast. Welcome back, Daryl. Yes, thanks for having me back. I've survived. I'm 50 now. I've, I've oh, not right. been murdered. I've not been killed by duplicates or anything. <laughs> I'm still here. You you have you haven't been transferred into a ponit- uh, positronic body, like not uh, yet. like Picard. <laughs> I don't want that one. If I shoot, I might as well just stay in the same broken body I have. Yeah. If I'm going to do that, yeah. G- yeah, give me the good stuff. Well, see now now our listeners know exactly why you were uh, talking about that in in uh, what was it last episode or the or the first one I can't remember now but um, uh, where we talked about uh, why why would we want to have a a, uh, a an, an android body that was the same age as we are exactly it's <laughs> like it's like being rich and being like you know I rather not have any money <laughs> it's like no no or or you can only spend so much yeah in a certain like, time no, yeah you're not doing that well ha- belated happy birthday to you daryl thank you thank you I, I got a nice uh heartwarming gift of turning on my phone and then seeing captain shaw not curse me out but uh tell me happy birthday it was great well that that is, that is so you got one of those uh celebrity birthday messages is that right yeah, yeah, my uh, my buddy uh, Hassan from uh, oh cool, who we record uh, DC All Stars and um, and uh, Gotham by Geeks. We uh, he he sent me one that he knew. He's a fellow uh, trekker, so he knew that would be something I would want. Mm-hmm. And I uh, oh my god, it's having Todd Stashwick. You know, it's like it's even though you know it's a job. You you do these recordings, you get paid. It's a job. But he just does such a cool thing. Like he he recorded it from his man cave, and he has like comics and geeky stuff behind him. Oh, really? As he yep, as he's talking, and he you know, and he did a specific thing, and he talked about it's your birthday, and you know, Hudson couldn't be there, and blah, blah, blah. you know, he just it was so it was cool. Like it was, it actually didn't feel like one of it didn't feel like William Shatner did it. Because you know William well, Shatner would be like, oh, it's your birthday. I don't care. Check cleared. You know, that would be part of his whole shtick. The check cleared. So fine. You're 50. Get over it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That's what I expect a William Shatner birthday mm-hmm. message to be. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, the actor did not do it in, as Shaw. Is that right? It was just, just a, a nice little birthday message from him? Yeah. He was just uh, uh, Todd. Stashwick, but he did throw in some Captain Shaw, you know, isms. And, oh, cool. You know, like it's him. Like, I don't know. I love Captain Shaw. Man. Mm-hmm. Like, I could watch, I could watch another 10 part series of just the Titan under the command of Captain Shaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where he's just giving people shit. <laughs> For ten episodes, like I, I would love it. Yeah, I, I'm not, a, I'm, I have not been a big fan of like prequel stuff in Star Trek. I think we go, they, they go too much to that well. Well, prequel with everything. Yeah, everything is prequel. Well, that's now, true. Especially. You're right. You're right. But in this case, I wouldn't mind having a Picard prequel being the Shaw ten episode series that you're talking about. 
I say just call it Star Trek Universe, right? And then Ooh. put in whatever thing you want to particularly do. Like if you wanted to have Star Trek Universe, the Titan, boom, for that season. Star Trek Universe, DS9, and then have people that still want to, you know, you kind of see the worlds of DS9, you know, the, that was involved in, in the DS9 world. And the actors that would want to come back and come back and kind of do little mm -hmm. story. It doesn't have to be that it's the end of the universe all the time. It could just be, what's Kira doing? You know, what, what's uh, Dax doing? And have it where they get together and they go on this, you know, little adventure or something like that. And you get to see what are the politics of of the Bajorans now over this many years while uh while uh, uh Cisco is still with the with the wormhole uh aliens. It's like just do that. Like just do a Star Trek, just name it that Star Trek universe and then pop in whatever you want to have. It's it's funny you say that because I I read just recently uh, a headline I uh, I think it was from CBR and I don't I tend yeah, not to go their site yeah I can't always <laughs> think that. exactly yeah. right but the headline was um, that supposedly there's talk of doing a Voyager just like they did with the next gen here well they are lucky they're one of the blessed cast that has all their char all their actors are still alive too. Like, that's rare. I mean, to have a, sh you know, to have these shows that have been on as long as they have been to, to have the benefit of actually being able to, to have all the original actors come back. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, if anything, it's it, uh, Picard season three with the, with the next gen cast has shown that there's lots of interest in, uh, in these, these old series. Yeah, of course there is. But hopefully they don't kill anybody from the Voyager cast before the show ends. That's that's first. I'm saying that, and then it's like, oh, then they kill Seven, then they kill Janeway, then they, like, and you're like, oh, I guess not. So hopefully, you know, if they make it, they all make it, then... And the actors are all healthy enough to still, you know, because they're still working. So... Mm -hmm. Use them now while you got them. Like, don't wait for it to get to a point where they're at a, you know, they're at an age where they can't comfortably do it anymore. Like, like, why? <laughs> yeah, why that would not? be kind of that would be kind of interesting to see the the Voyager crew. Even though that's uh, uh, that's the Star Trek series that I've not finished. Really? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've, I've finished them all. Like, just I could never stop watching. Uh, shows I have to like you know my love of each varies depending but mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I you know I love the world too much I can't I can't stop I can't stop myself I can't do this but we are here today to talk about the episodes four and five like I said no in scenario and imposters and um, before we get into our discussion of those I'm just going to give a brief synopsis of both episodes this time at the top here and then we'll get into our discussion uh, about those episodes. And I can only imagine that uh, we'll see, but I, I think there are most of our conversation might center around the fifth episode <laughs> for a very specific reason. Mm, could be. <laughs> All right. So episode four, no win scenario with time running out, Picard, Riker and crew must confront the sins of their past and heal fresh wounds while the Titan dead in the water drifts helplessly towards certain destruction within a mysterious space anomaly. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And for imposters, caught by Starfleet and facing court-martial, uh-oh, paranoia grows as Picard struggles to uncover whether a prodigal crewman from his past has returned as an ally or an enemy hell-bent on destroying them all. And of course, uh, that, <laughs> that, for, that prodigal crewman is uh, a notable cast member, former cast member, and returning cast member, I guess, uh, Michelle Forbes. Yes, love of my life. Ro Laren. <laughs> love yes. of your life. Really? You, you like Ro Laren that much? I do. I love. I love <laughs> Ro. Um, she would have made a great second ex-wife because she would. She would not have been able to stand me for long. She would have divorced <laughs> me. But it would have been great. I would have, you know, brought it up in conversation. I was married to, to Ro, Ensign Ro. Did you know that? All right. Well, I guess we'll we'll get we'll get into more of that when we. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we don't want to jump too far ahead into no, 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 no. the conversation, but oh wow. All right. So um uh so what generally, uh, Daryl, what did you think of episode four, no win scenario? And and it's very Star Trek uh, Star Trek two uh influence. I mean, I I enjoyed it. It was it was weird to see Riker and Picard fighting mm-hmm. uh, like we did. And so when it calmed down a little bit and then kind of now we're, you know, trying to recoup, uh, you kind of see a little bit more of of the gelling of, of the two of them and their friendship and whatnot. So I I enjoyed it. Like I, I do. I love that stuff. Like I love any kind of underwater submarine kind of like storytelling when they do that in Star Trek. I always dig that. Like that's, you know, when they have to do like, it's not just fast shooting and all that, but it's actually, you have to use strategy to win. Mm -hmm. That's, I always dig that stuff. Those episodes. Well, and I mean, we have a, there are several episodes that are like that throughout the, you know, the, all the Star Trek universe to use Mm -hmm. your phrase. But you know, with the original series, we had um, uh, oh, oh shoot, I am I'm what's what's the one that is the uh, the Romulan? Oh, was it Balance of Terror? Balance of Terror. Oh my God, I can't. You know, I used to I used to impress my family and friends by being able to uh, know every title of every Star Trek original Star Trek episode and be able to tell them what it was about. And now I just I I can't do it. <laughs> no, those days are over. We're older yeah. now. Our yeah. brains are not are not. Uh... Going that way, but but that's a perfect uh, type of episode, like you're describing, yeah. right? And so mm-hmm. we get you know a little bit of shades of that with this, and also, like I said, with uh, Star Trek Two, the no win scenario, because the the episode starts off with uh, a flashback to Picard in Ten Forward, the rest uh, the the bar restaurant, mm-hmm. whatever, uh, on Earth, and these cadets come up to him, and and they're they're you know they see a living legend, and you know going back to our conversation. Last episode uh, in Shaw trying to eat his fish sticks. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know how Shaw is not all that impressed with the living legends, no. but but these cadets certainly are, uh, and uh, so they're trying to get him to tell them some stories. And you know he he says at one point, and I thought and I thought this is you know there's no subtlety on this show sometimes because uh, they say or Picard says no matter how bleak or unwinnable a situation may seem, as long as uh, the, the cadets and their crew remain steadfast in their dedi- in, in their dedication. One was never without hope. And then we, I mean, I think we immediately go to the, the you know, the, the situation with the Titan and they're sinking. Although how do you sink in a, in, in space? I, Good I know question. it's, it's, it's Good a question. gravity. Well, they, they do say that, but it's just like, yeah, well, you yeah. know, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but anyway. And it's also bull crap, right? When they, when they ever, when they have, you know, the older, I, this is so, Star Trek two also with this pre, you know, thing of, of, of Picard being like, everything's great. And you'll always make it in the end. And it, you know, like we're Starfleet, we're so strong and powerful together, blah, blah, blah. But then something happens. that's just horrible. And then he's doubting himself the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like they did that. They did that with the wrath of Khan. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a format that they, you know, a beat that they continue to do. And I'm sure they're going to do it. They played with it in, in strange new worlds. They played with it in discovery. They'll continue to do that in whatever Trek mm-hmm. uh, comes. Cause it's well, just, it works a, that good. Yeah. It's such a great story beat. It's a character thing. Yeah. It, it, it enables characters to shine and it stre- and it caught and the stressors cause conflict that we need. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yes. So, so what do you think uh, if you if you if we were to do a comparison in uh, between Kirk in Star Trek Two and Picard here? What who who comes out on time? You know that whole Kirk versus Picard <laughs> argument from nineteen eighty seven. I mean, there's so much. I think now there's so much more similar in terms of where they are in their lives now than they were. Uh, if you had asked this question like a few years ago or whatever, but they're so close again, which is why you can tell that they they did a lot of stuff pulling from, we got to do a lot of deep stuff with Kirk and Rathacon, like giving him a son and, you know, like that whole, 
you know, giving him an enemy that he can't really, he's having a harder time fighting and yeah. having it be that he hasn't been in these situations for a long time. And so, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know. There's, they're, they're not that far apart. Cause I mean, they both are kind of never gave themselves time to have families. Right. Even though Kirk knew about his son all those years and Picard didn't even get the chance because both women did not think they were good enough fathers, right? They didn't have the potential to be good <laughs> enough fathers. So they both similar found themselves in the same place. Yeah, and that's kind of you. You bring that up about the father thing. Um, you know, we we think of these two characters, these these two Star Trek legends, as these really great men, and maybe they weren't so great. You know, it's just it's just this that dissonance of thinking about them as, uh, well, I guess maybe. Not, 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 not them specifically, but the way they were perceived by by the mothers of their sons. That you know, you you can't do this. You're. I don't think that you're a good. You're a good fit <laughs> for right. for fatherhood. What was that, uh, Patton? Right. You think of we think of General Patton, and even when they did movies about him, they would show that. Yeah, even though he was such a good wartime general. But then they show home life and it's horrible. Mm. <laughs> the kids are estranged from him. The wife is, you know, they're not really close because everything they put everything into being, you know, great at, you know, what the, their job the job is. Yeah. What yeah. their role, what their mm, uh, raison d'etre is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. Picard and, and, and Kirk, right? They're dedicated to. To Starfleet to the point of of even, you know, neglecting all of their personal relationships a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and 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 the I think that perhaps one difference is is the uh, you know they they both have their crews, mm-hmm. but it it seems like, and I don't know if this is just the way that because of all this time has passed both both in re you know reality and also within the 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 the, the Star Trek universe. Um, Picard has this family uh, with Riker and the others, right? Which I think is just a little different. I mean, it's it's there's it's still kind of a family, but but there's it just seems like there's a bit of a distance between Kirk and, and the others, uh, minus Spock. I think McCoy, the gel right? is better. I think the connective yeah. tissue is a little bit better. Yes, cause, exactly. Because Spock also was pretty not i don't even want to say standoffish but but spock was still in his own thing too Mm -hmm. like he had a a plan like he didn't have kids either his whole thing was i'm going to after he finished uniting uh they had the kid in records and and he was instrumental in that with the klingons after that he's like i want a bigger job you know i want a bigger challenge to re reignite uh, to to uh, unify the Romulans with uh, the Cl- with us the uh, the Vulcans like so he never had time for that kind of stuff and I think mm-hmm. Picard is different like Picard had Riker and he has uh, Deanna and that's they 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 kind of held him together like they wouldn't let him. Because uh, remember, what did he do? He went off and sat in a, his uh, vineyard and uh, pouted for how many years? <laughs> but you know that they called him. You know that they called him and contacted him, probably visited him, Jordy also. But I feel like they did more of the reaching out than Picard did oh, yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Because they just understood. They just kind of understood that this is just who he is. Yeah. Well, and I can't wait to get to the next episode because since we're talking about family, um, you know, th- this the idea of of what family is to right. to Picard and and the rest of these people. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's not just familial; it's it's uh, it goes well beyond that. Uh, but we do get we do get that uh, scene, like I said, right uh, basically right after this, after that, the opening where. And this is the thing I like about the the fact that they're older and and uh, more seasoned in some, right. in some ways, right? Because right. because if they were younger and and this were a show about uh, them as younger characters, you know, they might 
they might uh, extend that melodramatic uh, uh, rift between Picard and Riker a little mm-hmm. bit longer. Right. But, you know, because we only have 10 episodes and, <laughs> and, Can't do and, that. and uh, yeah. And the fact that, you know, I, as I perceive it, because they're older, they're, they're, they, there's less ego there. And so Riker comes to, you know, we get that scene with Riker with the bridge crew and he's like, uh, what about this? What about that? Uh, draw power from, you know, all this, all this stuff he's trying, which, you know, nice, uh, nice counterpoint to what I was complaining about on last episode right. for, the, for the previous, <laughs> um, uh, episode three, I think it was where Riker wasn't doing anything. He just seemed to be standing there, uh, trying to figure things out, but Frozen. At least, yeah. yeah, at least now he's trying to do something. So I like that. Um, uh, but then, you know, once he realizes the, the, or the, the impact of what he's realizing about the situation, he just, he goes to Picard and, and he's, he, he's apologetic. You know, he, t- he tells Picard, you were right before. Well, the joke has always been with uh, TNG's staff meetings, right? That's always <laughs> been the joke, the running joke. Yep. But they are best when they. That's the difference between Picard and Kirk. Kirk's yep. staff meeting is I'm going to do this, and only Spock and McCoy can tell me I'm messing up, right? But in, in TNG, the, he does actually listen. And so he 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 trusts his crew and listens to them when they're telling him something. So if they had worked together, if they had just spoke to each other, if they were both on working on on all cylinders, I think that they would have figured out that there would have been that there's some kind of thing we're missing and it would not have been stuck in this situation. I think they kind of realized that after, you know, everything was happening. Mm-hmm. But they did they didn't speak to each other. They were talking at each other. When when Riker actually was talking at all, right? So, they, but they were not working together, and that's not them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you get that a little bit of role role reversal. Um, yeah, uh, with Riker being in charge, and Admiral Picard is kind of playing a support role, but he he you know he's still trying to come up with the 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 strategy to win and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, they're both doing it on their own. Yes, they're both trying to come up with it on their own, and that's not how they. Yeah, that's not. A Picard. That's not a Picard and Riker thing. They mm-hmm. talked to the crew, and they're not, you know, and they didn't trust these kids, <laughs> right? Because they would have if they. This was Jordy and you know Jordy, Deanna, and all. They all Worf. They, I mean, even though they always ignored Worf, they're like, "What do we want to blow them <laughs> up?" No, Worf, we can't do that. Yeah, they always ignored him, but still. They'd be like it, it, that they would listen and they didn't do that. They didn't have a kind of a round table discussion on what the ship can do, what we can do, you know, like what are the, what are the things they probably, a younger crew wouldn't think to make a suggestion if they kind of mm, thought mm-hmm. something was up Yeah, because they would feel like, who am I to tell legends? <laughs> well, it, that, and, and, you know, they're, their captain was Shaw. Right. And you don't talk to Shaw. Well, th- that exactly. I don't think he fostered a, no. um, a collaborative oh, no. uh, work environment. No. And then two, you know, they probably were doing a whole lot of things, you know, on their, well, they on their missions. The fights, right. Their, their yeah. fights would have been, oh, wow, this is crazy ship in, in the, in the fleet doing some crazy stuff. Well, we're going to turn back and do what we were doing anyway, but we'll call and just let them know. Right. That's him. His thing is to just let Starfleet know. That's it. And then he would go off and and do what they do. And then they would bring in a flagship, you know, crew to come in and assess and deal with it. Like, he's not that guy. Like, he's not the, you know, let me look and see what this anomaly is and mm. and check it and all this kind of stuff. That's not what he does. Uh, the Shaw is the regular. He's the nine to five captain. He's the one. <laughs> that, our mission is this. This is what we're going to do. Get it done, and we go back. That's it. Star Trek nine to five. Yeah, Star Trek nine to five. They can call the show that Star Trek nine to five. <laughs> so, uh, uh, something you just you just said uh, reminded me of the this other thing I wanted to touch on about Riker. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, an older Riker. Mm-hmm. You know, we have uh, he's dealing with the death of his son and the, right. his estrangement with with Deanna and all that stuff. Uh, and like I said, he apologized to Picard. You were right before because he, you know, he was scared. 
like like as you pointed out last episode. Yeah. But then he starts talking about in all their travels, everything they've experienced. He reveals to Picard, nothing has proven to Riker that there was anything after, and that's what, and, and given the death of his son, that's what was was really killing him inside. Yeah. And he leaves. He leaves that conversation with Picard, saying, "And this is from. I remember uh, uh, seeing this in particular. I may. I may have mentioned it in that in our first episode recap. Uh, uh, Riker saying, "This is the end, my friend." And I thought, "Well, that. What does that mean? You know, right? Is that does that mean Riker? There's something going on with Riker? Well, it, yes, but not in the way that I thought. It was just this this uh, despair that he seems to be feeling. Right. Like you." I mean, yeah, I get it. I mean, they've we were survived. You think about it, you know, they have to survived um missions where they should not have, right? They've they have come out of situations where they've seen, you know, this is end of the universe kind of <laughs> adventures and they were able to to all come home, meaning the original you know, the seven. They all pretty much came home until data got destroyed. And so he just to to lose your kid and not lose your kid to like we were attacked by the Borg or we were attacked by, you know, some, you know, crazy interstellar war or something like that. They lost him to just to to being sick. Which is just, you know, I could see him kind of feeling like, what did I do all this stuff for? Like, we can't I couldn't even get my son help. To, to you know that was just a form of cancer or something it's like we go through all of it mm-hmm. it's like a fireman or a police officer like or or someone in the military who's just you know like who's been through life and death situations you come home and then your kid gets sick from something and passes away yeah like what does that do to you mm-hmm. he's supposed to be safe like if he lost him if he had joined starfleet and he lost him on a mission I think he'd be able to deal with it better, but to lose him the way that he did, it just, I think that's the thing. He just can't wrap his head around. Well, yeah. And, and then of course, uh, we get almost like a, a shift in Riker, right? Because we go, we go, he's in this, he's in this situation, no win scenario Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yells at Picard from, from, from the last episode, right? You killed us all to you know, this is the end, my friend. And then he say, he's like, go be with your son for as long as we have, go be with Jack. And I thought that was pretty, um, uh, magnanimous of, of, uh, Riker to, to, mm-hmm. to realize that about himself in just a short period of time with all these heightened, heightened emotions and the situation and all this stuff to realizing, oh, I, that was wrong and, and I should be better. Even though he's he's facing impending death, I I think that's again I I, I come well, back to this. I think Riker is the better character in this show. Well, plus he was married to a therapist. A <laughs> well, licensed that's true. Therapist <laughs> for how many? Come on, you know you true, had to true. have conversations like that, right? Yeah. But 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 I mean, uh, despite that, you know they're still having some issues, right? Because he's he's run away. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Like it, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter that she's a licensed uh, therapist that have dealt with all these relationships. It's different when it's you, mm, you know, yes. when it's your family. Like it's you can't fix everything. Like it's not just that simple thing. So, and they don't look at you as it's different when they being with a doctor. It's like you could when it's a stranger saying it. <laughs> like you know, you have that distance. You can listen to a doctor telling you to do something. It's different when it's your wife or husband telling oh, yeah. you to do this. Yeah. <laughs> because you look at them as, you know, your your spouse, your or the you know, the one you're with. And you see them at their, you know, at their worst and at their best, but you're just not it's just that distance is the thing that, you know, that sometimes works out better and you just don't take your own advice. Mm-hmm. So I could see that. I could see him being, you know, having that problem. Like I could see Deanna being like, "Listen, you ain't my captain. I've seen what you did when you didn't clean the dishes." <laughs> you know, like it's just certain yeah. things that just come up, and you're like, "Yeah, they can all bow down and be like, you know, you're a great legend. 
I know where the bodies are buried. I know what you've done over the years. <laughs> well, we we get a little bit of this uh, in future episodes too between of course. Uh, uh, Riker and Deanna. So I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, coming back to that. Yeah. Uh, when we get to that point, but so yeah, uh, Park, Picard does go uh, be with Jack, and they go to a holodeck recreation of Ten Forward. That boy, they did. They really wanted to use that set, didn't they? This, uh, this season. Yes, they did. It came up with a reason too, right? Because yeah. the first thing you think is how the hell are you running these scenarios when you're at a deficit of power, right? Yeah, right. And they had to make a point of saying they treat it as if it's own, it has its own power source. And, you know, before you start sending us letters <laughs> and tweeting at us, <laughs> this, is, this is what I, the deal is. I feel like they've done that a few times now, where yeah. like like with Jack's accent, right? There's like, right. okay, well, the, we're going to explain this to you, so you don't just tweet at us all the time that we're, exactly. we we screwed something up. He went to so, France, and he's got uh, yeah. you know, he's, he's just he's his father's son. Leave us alone. Don't yeah. tweet us. Don't don't message us. Don't tweet us. And and didn't uh, speaking of the 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 holiday. So so what I liked about it was you know the. Starfleet has been in all the their their starships have been and their crews have been in all these situations where they realize that um uh, at least in you know the the, the 24th and now 25th centuries uh one you need you need counselors on yep. your ships right yes, from you do. from the from the next gen era and right. and now we get the revelation that or and this is my since we we mentioned Voyager before this is my question for you Daryl since you watched it all Mm-hmm. Um, they make a reference to Voyager about the battery, uh, si- the, the separate power situation for holodecks because Starfleet realized that uh, the crew in in dire situations needed needed that comfort. Like, yeah, uh, you know, Picard does does ten forward because that's a comfortable place to him. For sure, but but other other uh, Titan crew members join them in the holodeck. Right. And so I, so I was just wondering, did, would, did, did that actually come up in Voyager, or is that just a, a nice little yeah um, tidbit that they threw out? Yeah, they had. Uh, there was a point in the series where um, Paris, Tom Paris, pretty much created this bar. He was like the American of the show, mm-hmm. right? And he created like they had him have where he likes vintage cars, and he, you know, they did the whole thing. They do the whole thing with him because he's a pilot, right? You know, he can't be anymore. You know, in terms of American is that in terms of how they created that character of being, you know, hot rod, you know, writer pilot, all this kind of stuff. He's into all that kind of cool stuff. Um, and so, yeah, he created a bar where he put it all together and it was their 10 forward kind of thing to have this. To have this bar where they would all go to sometimes they would have scenes where they would uh, it would it would be on it all the time and they would have uh crew members would be able to just go there and hang out and, you know, decompress over time. Yeah. Cause Janeway kind of knew you, we need something like this. Like you yeah, can't just exactly. be, you can't just be a regular 10 forward, you know, kind of situation. We need something else. Mm-hmm. You need a sports bar or something sometimes or, <laughs> or a tavern or something. You need yeah. it. You just yeah. need that kind of, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, just a little little detail. We find out that Jack, uh, not not a big wine fan. No, of course they had to do that. She, it's your father's thing, right? You gotta, yeah. yeah, you gotta have some kind of thing where the son is like, I'm not into that. That's his thing. Uh, a little bit later, since we're since we're still talking about uh, the the ten forward stuff, uh, there there. So I mean, Picard at one point just directly asks him. You know, he's he's so direct and to the point. He just asks Jack, "Why did you Why did you never seek me out?" Yeah, that would be a question I would want to know too. Yeah, I, I and I it just uh, that 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 little bit just uh, reminded me of my own dad because he's 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 direct like that. He'll just you yeah. know just ask me a question, but I, but I love that about him too. So right. I, I thought that was kind of cool. And then we get that wonderful scene because uh, because uh, we you know we go we kind of get more of the the like the flashbacks to that earlier time with Picard and that and the cadets, right. And now it's transitioned into basically uh, Jack. I think it was Jack that asked him to tell him a story about something. And he was telling the story of uh, his namesake, Jack's namesake, mm-hmm. uh, which we, which I thought an, another little nice little bit. Picard tells his son that he would have wanted to name Jack Jack after yeah. Beverly's first husband. 
So I thought that was a nice little touch. I know, which is still so weird, right? <laughs> But we do well. I mean, because I, I think it's is it weird to us because um, all we know of of Jack Crusher Senior is that um, he he was friends with Picard and he died. Well, he wasn't just friends; they were best friends. Uh, Exactly. Uh, Yeah, we wouldn't it be? I mean, the thing about it, like, wouldn't it be kind of weird? Not to say it couldn't happen because it could, but wouldn't it be kind of weird? to to get into a romantic relationship with your your best friend's spouse kind of weird a mm. little bit i mean even though it's over many years but still like it would kind of be there's got to be some thought on that every now and again like uh, yeah this is, yeah you met her as and unless it was something where you were friends with with that person first and then Oh, and, and then he became best friends with Jack. Right, right. Yeah, that's that, different. Yeah, that is that that would have been a nice. But you dimension. met her as yeah. your friend's spouse. Yeah, yeah. I I, I understand. It, it it does seem kind of weird, but you know they they do their best to try and work through it. Um, oh yeah. Well, they had the year. I mean, they had all those years on the Enterprise, so it's different. Like that's yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah. Like you love. He got he got killed. It was you know he was he was killed and. In action and and they but they also had that whole thing of being being in close quarters and working together day after day after day and of course you can that can change right mm-hmm. now you have more experience with her than you even do with Jack oh that's true he's yeah been, he's been gone that long yeah. so that can that's something that can change right that's the mm-hmm. thing that when you're still in contact with them that that much that long. Well, I, I, but I like I like the story that Picard is telling his son yeah. about it, his namesake, uh, or Jack's the namesake. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, right. <laughs> because it plays it plays into the plot later in the episode, but it does mm-hmm. uh, which you know again they're they're really just like we're talking about with the accent and and whatnot. You know they're 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 making sure to point out certain things so that a, a later thing will make sense. So, yeah, it's easy that Jack is dead because, you know, like they don't you can throw things into his character. Oh, exactly. That, yeah. You know, it's yeah. easy. But that, but it was a, it was a cool little story about how uh, Picard and Jack survived this this situation. Um, and then then this is the point. Uh, the reason I want to bring this up is that mm-hmm. Shaw suddenly walks in to <laughs> 10 forward hobbling in. Yeah. Humbling in, yeah, and starts to take, or yeah, well, I was gonna say, starts to take the, take the piss out of a card because he's like, uh, he he was telling his experience during uh, the Battle of Wolf uh, three five nine. Yeah, well, Shaw is 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 honesty drunk, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that he needs the drunk part. He's just, he's just. Uh, wow, he's quick to say something anyway, but I still yeah. think he would not have said it the way he said it. If he had not already been in that in that in his cabin drinking up a storm. Well, yeah, he, he well they did he uh, he did start it by saying that uh, the uh, the drugs that he was given for the yeah. pain were really good. <laughs> exactly. But but yeah, he just goes through and it's uh, I love I love the actor. Um, Me too. He he did such a great job at that little scene, and just the emotion. Mm-hmm. That he that's playing on his face as he's reliving that that scenario that he that he went through, where you know uh, the the ship I forget the name the Constance was it is that what yeah USS yeah. Constance yeah so so you know they're all down on on the life deck and uh, there's not enough life pods and this this lieutenant just shows up and starts pointing you and you and you and and you know he gets chosen and just just that. The anguish that that he felt at that time and still feels all these years later, dealing with that, yeah. and 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 you know and just I and and Picard just thought he's just sitting there taking it because he I you know he feels like he deserves this because he wasn't able to fight back against the Borg and became Locutus. And it's so interesting to have a situation where usually in a story like this, where you were chosen to survive. You, the, the character would say to themselves, I am going to be the best, whatever they are, to earn 
you know, to for the ones who didn't get picked to mm-hmm. earn to earn that life that I was given, you know, like I'm going to do, you know, the best meaning I'm going to risk my life most of the time so that I could, you know, help the most people. Shaw was kind of more realistic because that realistically, we don't all, you know, if you, if you, if your life, if your life was saved in a situation and others were not that you knew, not everybody comes out of it going, now I'm going to be, you know, super into, you know, like, I'm going to just be a super cop or super doctor or, you know, like whatever it is that you do, I'm going to, I'm going to be the greatest at it to make up for what Mm. happened. That's generally kind of how we go. It kind of, kind of goes with, you have survivor's guilt and either Mm -hmm. you deal with it or you don't. And that, and that survivor's guilt can do a lot to burn the good parts of you out and it did that with Shaw. This yeah. is why he is so yes. angry and standoffish because I think he felt to himself, why make friends with people when you know that they could they could pretty much be put in a situation where he has to make a choice like that, like they had to make. Well and 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 it it you know going back to his first appearance and we talked about him and and how arrogant he was and dismissive mm-hmm. right and it, this all makes sense now it's not just him looking at these uh the, the you know the legendary officers of the of the enterprise d and and uh you know he's he pales by by comparison no it's because he has dealt with this kind of like kind of like um cisco did in deep space 9 yes uh, you know, sure. the very first episode, he, and he was antagonistic to Picard as well because this, for the very same reason, you know. And of course, he lost his wife. A mm-hmm. um, little different situation, but it's just like you know, it's it, it was just so good. Yeah, you're watching these people come. All seven of them came back right out of that terrible situation. Your immediate, you know, everybody has your, you know, you have your immediate circle when you're serving right on a ship, his immediate circle didn't come back. They didn't all come back, but he has to look and see Picard with Beverly and Deanna and all of them. And and you say to yourself, well, you're the cause of it. Like you were, you were the cause of a lot of this. Why Why you? Yeah. Why you? Why do you guys get to come back? Mm -hmm. Cause you, you were the ones who kind of, kick the hornet's nest in the first place. Like if you really look back, if you if you were one of those people <laughs> that look back into Starfleet story. Yeah, it was Picard's fault that they even encountered the board when they Q, did. Right. Yes, if it wasn't yes. for them daring Q, he they would never have gone into Borg space. Yeah. So I get it. I get I get the resentment. And and this is why uh you know at the end, at the end of that scene, you know, uh, Picard leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but he, you know, he's, he's, he's taking it all in. He feels like he deserves it. Like I said, but, uh, we get a nice, another shot ism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He gets the greatest lines. I, I'm going to continue to say that because he says, forgive me at some point, asshole became a substitute for charm. Yeah. <laughs> that guy is so good. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not only like, he's just not uh, a jerk to people and he thinks he's great. No, 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 no. Shaw, he has a self-loathing mm-hmm. on top of being a jerk to people at times. Yeah. So it's it's a nice little combination of you can get some meaty stories out of somebody like that. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, during that story, though, uh, I'm just going to continue with Shaw here mm-hmm. for a second. Uh, he, he, he talks about how he was a grease monkey from Chicago. You know, he's, yeah. a, he's a former engineer. Mm-hmm. And that plays into the plot later because it turns out uh, that uh, in order for them to escape the gravity well of the nebula, uh, uh, so there are these pulses that are going, these energy, bioelectric energy pulses that are that are occurring, which Beverly is tracking. Now, I want to talk about that in a little bit too, um, but uh, it turns out that the, the plan is to, to make use of those pulses, and the only way to do that is to open up the... The nacelles. Oh, I forget what they call them now. These um, the exhaust manifest or something. Yeah, like that? manifold or something like Manifolds that, right? Or something. Yeah. And and only Shaw can do it because it's an you know it's an older ship. Even he, he even says this. Even though it's a it's a new 
version of the Titan. It's still right. based on it's retrofitted. older. Yeah, right. it's a, yeah, exactly. It's retrofitted. So only he, apparently on the entire ship, only he can can go in there and uh, bypass uh, the the manifold locks or whatever. And so I like that uh, that that came into play. Well, we get into the Jordyisms of it, right? Because remember when. Uh... When we had uh, what's her name? When she she was the um, person who built the the galaxy class starship. He fell in love with her. Oh yeah, what yes. He, uh, his thoughts of her. Remember they had the argument conversations of you know like he would. Why did you bypass this? And why did you? And it's like because you learn on the fly that sometimes you have to do these kind of workarounds and stuff that you would only learn when you're in a situation and he had to do a whole bunch of those things yeah it's the like, same thing with Shaw. like it's something these kids wouldn't know this because what it, what experience have these kids had so far yet like they just got out of the academy dude. yeah but come on, i mean the you know the chiefs of their divisions the chief engineer shouldn't be like a an ensign or, or a lieutenant right it right. should be somebody with some experience i would i would hope anyway wow look at look at your <laughs> I, your IT persons in, in well, any kind true. of office <laughs> situations. You have some IT guys who persons, that is not always guys, but some IT persons, people who can figure something out that way and kind of, you know, they know, they remember things, they remember, you know, how we used to do it, they remember the systems and they can kind of plug things in and do kind of certain stuff. And there's others that they follow strictly mm -hmm. the instruction manual and that's it they might know it you know backwards and forwards but if there's something that doesn't fit into that window they just look at you and go unplug the computer and put it back and turn it back on <laughs> that is basically what you get well unfortunately they couldn't uh just uh, unplug the titan and, and turn it no, back on because it, of the... work that way. <laughs> it didn't uh, didn't quite work but uh right uh okay so Let's see here. Um, uh, the other thing that we should probably talk about in this episode before we get back to those bioelectric pulses uh, uh, is the changeling situation. Yeah. Because we do get um, uh, a couple revelations, or at least one major revelation. So uh, Seven uh, knows that there's there's a changeling on board. She tells Riker. Riker's like, uh, keep it quiet. You investigate and go get the bastard. Which And that was right after the scene with Picard. I'm like, like I said, Riker's finally doing stuff. This is great. Right. <laughs> but but um, uh, 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 Seven goes to Shaw, mm -hmm. which I, that was a great scene, wasn't it? It was. It was. It, it, it. You know, she's trying to. You could tell that this is. She's a lot more better uh, uh, adjusted than she was season two, season one and two. Mm -hmm. um, but this was better, a more of how seven if you came up in a in the experience that she had work you know working with Janeway and 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 uh and Chicote and 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 the rest of the crew you would learn to even though you don't get along because that's one of the things I liked about Voyager is like her and uh Milana they did not get along mm -hmm. like they never in fact they never became friends on that show like but they learned she learned that you you still can work with people like you still are still valuable you know there's still something very valuable with cohabitation and learning from other people and it's kind of a thing you you kind of get she kind of gets it she could still continue to be even though Shaw was such a jerk to ignore him cuz he's done like you know Kirk I mean uh, Picard and and Riker have taking this ship over it's their baby now they're doing anything they want to do it's like he has no say so pretty much <laughs> but she you know but she kind of gets it that where it's like i could give him a lifeline i can put a hand out like even though i don't like him you know the, the things he's done he's still valuable he's still a valuable part of the crew and so she pulled she turns back and puts a hand out to him to kind of reconnect and that's something from growth that that shows the growth of of seven this is this is what Janeway saw in her and that's why she suggested that she that she should go and join Starfleet mm -hmm. I think this is what we're seeing without them saying it we're seeing it so I like that about it yeah 
but but the, the fact that she you know she she goes to Shaw and, and mm-hmm. needs because he knows the crew best, right? And so uh, she solicits his advice. I'm just I just I just thought that that was you know given their 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 current state of affairs between each other, you know, mm-hmm. just but she realizes that the greater good requires her to to make the sacrifice and and go you know hat in hand so to speak to right. to Shaw right. Right. Even though she didn't need, she didn't have to. And right. and this is where I was thinking, maybe Shaw should just take over being captain again, because at least he's coming up with with ideas and plans and, and recommendations and whatnot. Yeah, even though he he's... doesn't have baggage of these things. <laughs> he doesn't right. have all this stuff to be <laughs> working through. Like, that's not, that's not his thing. Even though I would call a little bit like, eh, a little weak on the story. Mm. Chainlink don't have to, that was Odo that had to always... I was going to ask you about that. But some of the other, it depends on the others. Like some, some of the chains, slings, some of the, some of them were better at it than Odo. Odo was. Yeah. Well, they were he, better at, 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 uh, rearranging their, their molecules or whatever. Well, there's a point where Odo starts to, where he's been into the link. He's been able to be a part of the great link. And from there he's learned other experiences and there's a part where odo says i don't need to use the bucket anymore oh okay i forgot about yeah that. there's a there's a part yeah when we get to like season six i think five or six where he kind of he says i he starts to have things in his in his room because he because they can mimic those different things like the more shapes and stuff that are around him the more he can practice uh, and that's that's experiences he got from being in the link. Like he's seen them do all these amazing things that he never thought he could do because he's been so limited by only being around solids. How's he gonna learn how to be a changeling if you're never around other changelings? Mm-hmm. So and so yeah, he doesn't need and that's why I, I heard that. I was like, What? No, he doesn't need the bucket. They, if they're experienced changelings, they don't need the bucket. There's different ways that they can turn. They can, you know, they don't need to do that. Yeah, and uh, I, I, you know, we're 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 kind of uh, poking holes at that the whole bucket. Yeah, thing. Exactly. But, I mean, it doesn't but, destroy it. It's just a, it's just a thing. It's yeah, the, it, but but it's a, it was a nice shorthand, right, To right. get to get um, a seven uh, on the um, on the hunt. Yeah, we only got ten episodes. We don't. That's have that's time very for true. All of this. Like you have to find. They need a, a pl- They need something for her to find. So that she could, you know, somehow find this changeling. E- even though it turns out to be for naught because the bucket right. gets destroyed. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, what was the point of that besides... We needed goo. We needed goo. <laughs> That's what it was. Re- residue. We needed residue. <laughs> I thought that was, a great, to, that was yeah. a great word. Um, but we do get, uh, speaking of changeling, we do get the confirmation, or at least the revelation, that Vatic herself... Is a changeling, yeah. And we get that that scene on the Shrike where she's she's um, she ha- well she you know she cuts off her hand, which then turns into goo, which then turns into this face. Yeah, which is still crazy to me. I'm like, but is it is it she's all changeling or is it the changeling was part it mingled with her? This thing mingled in. Yeah, it's it, it. Yeah, it's not quite clear because okay, so she's having this conversation. She's reporting in basically right. to uh, what appears to be her superior, right? And you, you at first I was thinking, well, this is just another you know a higher up changeling in in the in the resistance, mm-hmm. but it says it makes a specific res- a specific reference to your people, mm-hmm. and that does that doesn't seem like. That wh- whoever it is or whatever it is that she's talking to is it also a changeling? Right. Something. It's it. There's there's more to this than that. Yeah. That that out of everything in this episode, I think this this is the most intriguing part of the mystery that has been introduced so far. So it's like, wh- what is going on here? But the actress Plummer, she's so good in this. I know because we've seen her be. Uh, you know, a little, sort of a little crazy, you know, in the way that she little, little crazy, <laughs> but but you know, menacing. And yeah. but in this scene, she is hesitant. 
she is almost fearful. Yeah. Uh, and not just of this, this, the superior person thing, but you know, if she knows that if she goes into the gravity well, that, that she could very well die. Yeah. She does not want to end her existence yet. Yeah. Uh, But, but whatever is going on here, whatever hold this other thing, this, this face. It's scarier than than even death. Yes. As it, I I believe it said, you know, you, all of you are expendable. Yeah. You know, get the asset, which is Jack. Interesting though. It's like, whoa. What is worse than them already? Like, what is it? Exactly. Well, yeah. I, 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 at this point, I was thinking, oh, it's the changelings, so we have to defeat the changelings, and you know, and all that stuff. But it's like, wait, there's something else going on here. Mm-hmm. And and I like how they're building that mystery. It's like, well, uh, the, the, a bunch of people want Jack. Well, who who wants Jack? Well, uh, Vatic does. They're they're pirates. Oh no, wait, it's changelings. And she's a changeling, and oh, there's right. this other thing. Like what? <laughs> uh but first they have to get out of that 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 gravity well and they figure out that or jack jack figures out this is that that's why i wanted to come back to this um it's not because it, when when i first saw beverly at the you know towards the 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 top of the episode uh counting down those those um those surges mm-hmm. i thought oh well you know i've seen this i've seen this a dozen times on the next generation Somebody notices something, and then they report to the captain, and then That's they figure right. out how to deal with it, right? That's right. And I'm like, oh, Beverly's gonna. She's she already has an inkling of of something here, and she's you know she's gonna mention it, or she's gonna come up with the idea, and because I I knew I knew then that that they would be easy enough to to uh, somehow channel that energy to get them out. Right. It didn't. It didn't quite pan out the way that I thought, but you know. But still you the knew idea. that it was the genesis of it is is when someone does something. Yeah. If you've seen enough of these uh, Star Trek episodes, you 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 can kind of uh, suss it out yourself. Yeah, somebody's yeah. going to figure something out, yeah. and it's a piece of the puzzle that was missing. That's, that's exactly. What you exactly. Know. But yeah. but in this case, it's Jack who thinks of uh, taking advantage of the bioelectrical surges and uh, basically. Well, Marcus did it. Marcus was able to figure something out, and and that's what I mean by the beats. They're repeating beats from the the Wrath of Khan because Mark, you got to have it. Where well, damn, you're Kirk's son, right? You should come up with something amazing. <laughs> and you know, we get the same thing. You're Picard's son, like you, you had to know something. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to show us somehow that he's Picard's son. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because he's he's able to, you know figure this out and 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 uh they ride the waves out and of course they come across the strike which voyager has done that's that's kind of how they got out of they got through the conduit to come back to to the alpha quadrant is they Ah, rode the wave as soon as they said ride the wave i was like oh oh i'm surprised seven didn't say something about that like yes exactly there you go well you know i hear i hear i was giving jack a lot of credit but (laughs) <laughs> Maybe it should have been somebody else. They probably had to choose, like you know, yeah. we did a lot of seven. Well, cool. it's, seven is cool already. But yeah, that's a new true. Character, so we had to do something. But. Well, you know, they got to they also got to show you know how special he is. Besides, exactly. Besides, you know, all this other stuff that we'll right. get into later. But but we get a, a new uh, Riker maneuver, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> With you know, we already saw the Shrike throw. Um, a ship at the Titan, mm-hmm. but but Riker turns the table and throws an asteroid at the Shrike, which I thought was pretty cool. Right, it was. Uh, and, but then uh, this is what I loved. So so the the, the surges, of course, they they are. It's it's a birth. It's a symbol of birth because this nebula is a is a womb for these this new life form or or right. or or maybe an existing life form because don't they don't they look like the the uh, the uh, the creature from Encounter at Farpoint. That's what I was thinking, but then I I meant to go look up to see if they had uh, if that's what they were, but I didn't I didn't go to check. Well, all I did was look at pictures of both, and they look very similar. They look similar, yeah, and the and the little bit like the way the 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 little thing that was feeding on the Enterprise. They wind up. There was an episode when they almost. Uh, we we talked about it with when he met the engineer, the woman who had uh, built 
the oh, uh, Leah Brahms. Leah Brahms. And on that episode, remember, there was a a creature that they had never, you know, they encountered, they got a chance to encounter and they wind up, the creature wound up being drawn to them and they wind up um, accidentally uh, killing it. And they had to wait for the child, but then they had to help it give birth to the to this child and it that child needed energy like it was built out of energy in space Mm -hmm. and i was thinking of that one also that you know i was thinking of that creature because i can't remember the name of that creature either Mm -hmm. if they even named it but it was still a, a creature born in space of space who got power and and from you know they 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 drew power from stars and you know all kinds of different things and it's like it made me think of that Mm -hmm. like this was a collapsed star right that they were inside of like some kind of nebula something had uh collapsing i don't think it's clear it's not clear but i think they mentioned something like it was a collapse of something of a Well, I mean, if it's gravity well, we immediately think of, you know, black hole or, or yeah, a, dead, a, a star. dead star or something. Yeah. You know? But I, I thought it was I thought it was really neat uh, that, you know, one of the missions of, you know, Star Trek, then the, the crew crews of the Enterprise and other ships is to seek out new life. And right. we get a little bit of that. And so that was mm-hmm. a nice a nice callback to to uh, their former lives and. And missions, so I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, plus, it was. It, plus, you know, like I said, that the at least the um, uh, similarity to the the far point alien, which they also mentioned earlier in the episode, because Picard's like, right, uh, far point station, mm-hmm. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, right? he did, he did. So, uh, and then a, another revelation here uh, as we as we get to the uh, get through um, uh, at least my notes for this episode is that. We we did, we find out that Jack actually did go speak to Picard, but not in in the way that Picard would have hoped, because Jack was actually at Ten Forward at the time that all those cadets and whatnot were um, asking for stories, and he asked his dad, uh, uh, "Why didn't you know? Uh, why didn't you ever uh, have a family?" Essentially, uh, Picard was like, "I don't need any family. I can't stand children, and I don't <laughs> need them. And you're nothing to me." And like he was, yeah, it was funny. He was doing all that. It's like I don't need kids. I have Starfleet. And it's right. like, ooh, did you just say that in front of your kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we know why uh, yeah. he actually didn't uh, seek out Picard more. So. Yeah, he hurt his feelings. Um, and then at the end of the episode, Daryl, we get more of Jack and the red door and the voices. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I turned on the, I turned on the closed captioning so I could, <laughs> I could read exactly what, what was, we, what was being said. And, uh, the voices he's hearing is, uh, saying, find me and together soon. And it's, an, and the closed captions said it. I heard it, and then this is why I turned it on because mm-hmm. I thought it was Beverly's voice. Yeah, it did sound and, like that a little bit. And the closed captions confirmed it. So I'm like, "What is going on here?" Is and so immediately I think Beverly. There's something going on with Beverly. So now, you know, at first I was like, "Well, maybe there's something going on with Riker because of the the future." Or the the trailer for the upcoming stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And now, now I'm thinking maybe there's something going on with Beverly. What? How did you take that scene? I, you know what I thought because the only thing I can think of with the red door and the tendrils that are following, they look like veins, like right? mm-hmm. like from the womb, you know, like the connective ah. tissue from the womb. And I and I, that's what made me go. But he's hearing Beverly's voice because. They're trying to go with it being something maternal, Mm -hmm. almost like find me, like you're missing that piece of yourself. Like I like it. So you think it's the mother. It's a voice of of his mother, because that would be the first thing you would think of. Right. For him, because he's only in his 20s. Right. He's not he is not ever. He's never been married. And they probably he's probably never had a real close long time relationship and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. the if you're hearing woman's voice, it would be, you know, you'd think your mother at first, because he doesn't even know what the voice is, right? But you would 
but I think it was seductive in terms of you want to, you want to, mother's love kind of voice you know how they do that you know like we've seen in movies where they do that thing or they where it's a child and and they hear like at first you think it's your mother talking to you and then you find out it's not it's just something you know it's, it's something trying to goad you into a sense of uh being comfortable mm-hmm. yeah that that makes sense and that's what I kept thinking when I saw the. This is the only thing I could think of because I couldn't figure out anything else after the, and other than that, <laughs> is that it's supposed to make me think he's from the womb or something. Ah, okay. See, I I I took the tendrils to be like um, neural oh, connections, okay. right? Because like you know, in the in the end credits stuff that they show, they they they're showing uh, a certain uh, uh, imagery that 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 like a lot. Well, one of the the positronic brain thing. Although it turns out that that's that's something very specific, but um, but but that's why I was thinking uh, along those lines. Plus, you know, it, it seems to give him a headache when he gets these visions and whatnot. And, but but the, the more important thing is, where's this coming from? What's mm-hmm. the origin of this? What does it mean, right? And I and I was wrong. I uh, uh, the, the the whole Beverly thing, according to the closed captions, that was actually from the start of episode five. Um, and she also says, or the voice also says, come home, connect us. And that's where I was, that's where I was like, connect us, come home. That's where I was thinking, is Beverly a changeling all this time? Oh, is, is that I, going to I be the reveal? I never thought that. I, I was just thinking like the Great Link was like, it was kind of a, like how they were calling, how they used to call um, uh, Odo. Like as uh-huh. it got closer into the series, as he got you know, as they got closer to the Dominion War, I, I, I kind of, and again, the way that that, it was such a weird, right? Like at first she's like maternal towards Odo. Mm-hmm. And then you, then they throw out that they were having sex, but in a changeling, the way that a changeling would have sex. <laughs> well, that's like, right. Whoa, it's, that's a change. <laughs> I didn't see that be the case, but. But that's what made me think that too. That's probably why I thought that way is because of you know once they we it was revealed that it's the changelings that there's like a a great link. I kept thinking you know, like there's some kind of you know connective thing because that's how they would call Odo like come home like come you know this is where you belong come home to us. But but that, here's the big difference I think between what we've known of changelings from deep space nine and now this is that that episode five opens up with um jack being in a vision but he is he i i took it that he it was like he was being controlled like he wasn't himself right and that's uh, what it looked like yeah and on top of that he's uh he's wearing a starfleet uniform in that opening scene Right. And then later in the episode, Seven gives him that uniform. And so is this, whatever this connection, ability, whatever, red door vision stuff, is it, can, does it give him visions of the future? Yeah, I don't, yeah. That's the, I did it was throwing me. That, that was yeah. one of the many things that threw me when I was watching it, but. It, you know, he. Uh, things don't quite play out as it did in his vision at the beginning of the episode, but there's still enough similarities there where it's like, what is going on? And there was a push, but then I, you know what? I kind of told myself he is under pressure because your father, his father is Picard is Starfleet, right? That is, that is what he is uh, plainly. He is Starfleet. And there would be a, a, a kind of a conflict of, do you want to be, do you want to connect to your father? And if I connect to my father, that meant I would have to be in Starfleet. Cause that's the thing that Beverly kept throwing at him is that I don't want you. Oh, so that's a manifestation of that. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, but given, given what actually happens later, it's like, that seems yeah, after really this, coincidental then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time of watching it, I was thinking, well, maybe it's the, the pressure of yeah. he's, he's, he's battling a part of himself. Like I want to be as much as he says, he doesn't want to be ah. part of his father's life. You took that to be 
uh, more symbolic than I did. I, that's great. I, that, I that's did because it. It, I got it because I kept thinking again. I kept thinking of the Wrath of Khan. I kept mm. thinking of Marcus being a scientist versus just like Marcus is a is a physician kind of more than he is anything else because of his mother. And that was the thing. She took Marcus to make him, you know, to bring her and bring Marcus into her world, just like Beverly wanted to bring, you know, him into Jack into her world more than she would, you know, more than being part of, uh, there was a fear, the fear that he would run off and want to have adventures, you know, with his father. And she didn't want that. There's a part of her that didn't want it, a selfish part that, that didn't, didn't want to, not, didn't, uh, want to lose him to that mm -hmm. and so that's made me think of it like that's the struggle within him is you know i don't want to be starfleet but there's still that part of me that wants to connect with my father because he is a part of me so that's what made me think all that stuff no that, that i think that's a great a great interpretation of of the the vision that he had but um uh, we, I think that what the, the, oh, well, how about we do this? So let's talk about Worf and Rafi because they were totally absent in, in oh, episode yeah. four. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about their things just a little bit and then we'll get, cause the, the, the meat of episode five is, is, is Roel Aaron and I want to really get into that. Right. right. Um, uh, so, uh, like I said, Worf and Rafi were not in episode four and no. when they showed up in episode five, I was like, oh, oh, I missed them. Oh yeah. I, I, it's yeah. it's nice to see them again. So that was exactly. <laughs> I love the I love those two together. And Me and too. Uh, we get let's see. Um, uh, they encounter. Oh, what was his name? Crin. I think that's what his name was. The Vulcan gangster. A Vulcan gangster. <laughs> Who knew? Right. Uh, so his his you know when when again it's it's like they they're anticipating. Well, Vulcans wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> from from us fans. And uh, so they they had had the Vulcan say this: No utopia could exist without crime, and therefore an organized crime syndicate is logical. True, and plus you get well. I mean, we look at his we look at Spock's brother. He was full Vulcan, mm. and he was <laughs> all over the place, being full Vulcan. Like you could plus we had Vulcans that were part of the Marquis. You can logic. You can make yourself do anything if you uh, yeah logic explain yourself it into away. It. You can yeah. logic your way into doing a whole <laughs> bunch of horrible things. I just I just thought it was re really cool yeah. to see Vulcans being something other than yeah science officers essentially in Star Trek. Well, that's the cool thing with yeah. That's the cool thing with when you open it up a little bit and we visit other you know avenues. Where you're not just visiting other worlds, kind of thing, mm -hmm. I guess. You know, exp when you're not exploring, because they have not been exploring, and I think that gives you a chance to kind of see how diverse, even in within different races, how diverse they are in that race. They're not just all, you know, yeah, Spox and Tuvok. Exactly, and, they're not monolithic. Yeah. As well, although you know, I guess you could say, out of any of the Star Trek races, uh, Vulcans probably are the most monolithic. <laughs> True. Well, what we've seen, yes, <laughs> right. But then you think about it; it's like, ah, but still, you know, you think about it. You, a Vulcan can say, "I don't want to wait seven years to be in a relationship with someone." Maybe if I want to be in a relationship earlier than that, maybe if I like, you could. I mean, if you go down the line, you could tell yourself, like, uh, Spock's father. He, he listen. Spock's father had a type. He loved Earth women. Mm, that's true. Now he can tell us which he has that oh it was for research that's why i got married and had children with all these women research it's all research right it's like no bull crap you just love some earth women <laughs> and it's fine it's fine it's you, you it's fine i love earth women See that that's a that's what that's part one of your Star Trek universe um, movies. You do a you do a 1950s style B movie, yeah. where the Vulcans are coming for Earth women. Well, remember the <laughs> Earth like the member that I did was something I loved it, and I wish we could have saw more in this relationship. The Vulcan who was trying to get weapons for the Maquis, she kind of was digging on uh, Quark. 
like, hmm, I kind of want uh, maybe, you know, that's a new experience. And I've been with a with a um Ferengi. Like she was up with it. She was like, all right, we can go to dinner. Like he's trying to do all this flirting around the bit, you know, around the the stuff, and she's like, Oh no, no, no. Like, I get it. You wanna you wanna get together. Yeah, yeah, we can do that, but I gotta get these weapons first. Like, you're beating around the bush. I don't have time for all that. Yeah. Like she's blunt. I think I, I like e- that. Like eminently that. logical. <laughs> yeah, she's like because that's how you would be, right? You, your logic, you would you would not sit there, you know, trying to go through a whole thing of should I date this guy? Should I not date this guy? What are the pros and cons about being with him? What are not? No, Vulcan would be able to figure those things out quick mm-hmm. and be like, he's either on, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll hang out with him a night or not. So I kind of like that. Like I would, <laughs> I would like to have seen more Vulcans in in the in the world in yeah. the uh, Star Trek world because you get all types, right? You get you get Vulcans that you know with logic would tell them themselves they can do all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. Being a Vulcan, I would love to see a Vulcan cop. You know, Vulcan uh, uh, someone in the sports because we have Vulcans that were in the sports and stuff and Vul- like all ty- entertainers that are Vulcan. Why not? Well, well, we do see a couple uh, Vulcans on the Titan. One, yes. of course, is this uh, apparently the science officer. So we yes. get that that yes. that same trope. But we right. do in in the the previous episode in four in the ten forward scene, mm-hmm. we see a Vulcan. Um, uh, we see we see a Vulcan consoling another officer. So right. But my point is, it it was nice to see a Vulcan behaving differently than what I've seen a, a sure. Vulcan behave. So sure. I, that was cool. Yeah, because yeah, we got the ones we got the most. Tuvok was a mess re- romantically. Like, do we, did you ever watch the episode where you find out his background, where he uh, fell in love with a with a with a uh, a female alien that did not love him back? Oh no! I, and I he got seen that. so he was. This is during his puberty days, and he got so caught up into it that they had to take him aside and be like, "You got to chill. Like this is ridiculous." <laughs> and he was like, "I hate logic," and it was a whole thing. And he had to go through a situation where, where they were. The, his backstory. The, the story was he was having flashbacks of of a situation because there was a woman. They were trapped on a on a planet where time moved faster than it did outside of the planet. And so they were stuck on this on this world with this woman, uh, this alien woman, and she grew to kind of have feelings for him. And so Tom Paris was like, go for it. And he's like, I'm married. And he would not cross that line. Right. And so he thought back on that whole situation of when he was in love with someone who uh, yeah. did not reciprocate. And there was a whole thing. And he kind of, I mean, he did kind of, he, he did, he was attracted to her. There was some, there were things, that's the thing. Like Vulcans can be attracted to other, you know, beings. It's just that we always get the stunted, uh, thing <laughs> on, I mean, the, the Vulcans who pretty much tell themselves that they're, you know, that they're monks or something and they can't, <laughs> they can't be with well, anybody. And yeah. it, and if, um, strange new worlds has showed us anything, um, is that, uh, what we thought of Vulcan sexuality is, is, uh, completely wrong or different. Well, we got a little bit of that where she <laughs> almost tried to get spot killed cause she wanted to be with another, another Vulcan. Oh yeah. That's well, so, but, I mean, but, but again, that know. was from lot, that was a standpoint of logic. So well, lo- listen, you can tell yourself logic. I like pleasure, <laughs> right. right? Logically, I like to... I, I know, you know that. Yes, exactly. And that was, yeah. that, to me, that was like, oh, yeah, that is logical for them to to have sex and, right. and, and enjoy it or, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. We're- <laughs> yeah, it's just that we get stunt, we get, we forget because we watch all these episodes with these same, you know, Vulcans. The same two. The same two. And they're both, when it comes to... When it comes to sex, there's so I mean it's it's weird, right? When it comes to sex, they're so like just closed off and and like, you know, just old school about it, right? Like it's easier to do it this way so you don't have to worry about too many, 
you know, being on TV, it's easy to have it that they don't have relationships often. So when they do have it, it's a big deal, you know, because Spock did fall in love with some women in the in over the in the uh, original series. He did. And then he kind of had to say goodbye Mm -hmm. because he, you know, there's always a reason he couldn't settle down with them. You know, the whole star duty came first, right? It was always duty comes first. Duty comes first. Duty and logic, yes. Duty and logic, right? We always <laughs> get stuck with those Vulcans, right? Because they don't want to, they just never felt comfortable showing back then. I think they're more comfortable with it now, but the, the people that were doing Trek back then, the Berman years, I would say, mm. they just were never comfortable showing Vulcans being in romantic relationships. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's true. Yeah. Uh, shall we go to the the row stuff now? All right, let's do it. Uh, so this is earlier on in the episode, uh, but we got to lead into this. Um, we get uh, Riker transferring command back to Shock since he's now now improved. Um, they've talked about facing the music. Uh, I think Picard even says that line to some degree, and then um, uh, Shaw informs them that. He's already contacted Starfleet, and they're sending a ship out now. <laughs> Snitch. Which, I know, right? It's like, uh, Shaw is still Shaw. He's still Shaw. And I love him for it. I love him. Um, uh, the, but the big surprise of this episode uh, uh, was the the appearance of now Commander Ro Laren nice. as the security officer for the Intrepid who arrives there to arrest Picard and Riker for treason. What? Yeah. And in the book, she became a commander as well. Um, oh, really? In DS9, yeah. Ah. They, what they did was the same deal in the books was um, eventually she served her time, you know, being part of the Marquis. And then uh, she came out, she was able to serve, and she wind up being the security officer on D Space Nine. This was after the finale of D Space Nine. So it was, uh, Kira was pretty much the captain of the D space nine and she had a new CO and, and then she had, uh, and then that security, uh, ensign, ensign row. That, security. That's kind of funny considering that row was supposed to be the character that they, they that's why they did it transferred the over to deep yeah. space nine. Yeah. That's exactly why they did it. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> Uh, well, wait, uh, one little thing. Uh, you know, we talked about the ships before, the Titan especially. What did mm-hmm. you think of the design of the Intrepid with that little, I don't know, uh, bulbous um, secondary hull at the bottom? <laughs> it's like this little, almost like a little ball underneath it. I know. I That's like, weird, why, right? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, they just they just like to design new and different starships. And I know, they've been playing with that, like... To give them a big bottom, give them a a weird, uh, you know, don't make it completely disc shaped. Kind of mm-hmm. change that. They played with that somewhat. I just, I, I just think that there's too many uh, starship classes. They just, they, you know, I, I get it. I, it makes total sense that you know they yeah. want to play around with it, not not have it just look like the Enterprise or this right. ship or that ship. But it's like, well, would would a would an organization really? design that many different classes of starships it doesn't, doesn't no. make a whole lot of sense organizationally to me i know this is, this is what happens when you do shows later on they're like <laughs> well this would be a nice call yeah you know call out for this and um well we do though uh well like i said we, we find out that it's roe and uh she doesn't she's not using the transporters because that comes into it later mm-hmm. um she's on the shuttle to come over and talk to them and we get Pissy Picard back because he is not having Row for one second. Yes, yeah, this is petty old man Picard that yep. I like to see. And because uh, he, yeah, he can be that way, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to um, anybody not, you know, being loyal to Starfleet, what he yes. considers to be loyal to Starfleet. Did, did this did that whole conversation or the situation between Picard and Roe remind you of uh, Cisco and Eddington? Yes, it's for sure. It's, it's almost like a, a repeat of that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this is most definitely like you're not 
you know, getting why there's a gray area for this. And, you know, and Picard, same thing. He's not understanding why. Like, uh, Given Shaw's beratement of Picard in the previous episode, you know, this the sins of my past situation, mm-hmm. you would think that Picard, and not, not only that, but, but also just uh, how Picard's dealing with with Jack and, and that situation, you'd think he'd be a tad more self-aware regarding Roe. Or you'd be the opposite, because I think he really, he really, he doesn't like when his projects don't work. Like, all his <laughs> projects have pretty much worked, right? Like, Worf was a project for him mm, that worked Data. Out. Data was a project for him that, for the most part, it mm-hmm. worked out. Or, or was working out, yeah. Or was yeah. working out. Wesley was something that didn't work huh? out, yeah. and that bothered him, right? Um, that's something that made him feel a certain kind of way. Um, so we get precedence for that, right? It does, it does, like, he doesn't mention Wesley, right? Like, it's almost like a, a resentment and that you can go with why he doesn't mention Wesley. Like, even fondly in conversations, he doesn't mention Wesley at all. Mm, I, that, I'll tell you what, that's probably the greatest sin of this season, uh, not to involve Will Wheaton yeah, I would say as that. Wesley Crusher. I, I would have preferred they would have not given us that little tidbit in well, the second season. I don't think they season. thought it through. I, I really uh, think I, they I, thought I'm sure, it through. Yeah. And that's, that's why it happened the way we, we got it. But yeah, we get uh, we get this uh, like I said, um, grumpy old man Picard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just 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 poking at at uh, Roe. Yeah, like it's his do- it's a do- it's a daughter it's a father daughter. Ah, yes, right? thank you. Like, yes. So that that was one of my one of my um, one of my, uh, one of my notes was that you know uh, Jack isn't Picard's only kid. Mm-mm. In this situation, no. Oh no! I it's, it, that came across to me like a father daughter situation for sure. That's why it hurt him so much. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, and they even they even have that great um, conversation in Ten Forward because uh, Ro. I can't remember what what the pretense was, but she's gonna she's she takes Picard out of the conference room that they're in when they have mm-hmm. that first exchange, right? And. Um, uh oh one uh, yeah i i forget now what it, what it, anyway she she they get to where the the holodeck is and uh, is that where she yeah she pulls the phaser on him and says okay let's go in here right and you know uh picard thinks that that there's something up with her she thinks maybe there's something up with him we find out later um but then they have that just that real intense conversation i don't think you get like i i always looked at picard and and ro is like this is what happens when a when you adopt a child of a different race and you don't understand mm. that there are like he for him Starfleet is the race it, that is his race that's it that's all he knows like it's it's easy to be that way you're you're from Earth right that's your that's your world but she's not from Earth she didn't grow up that way uh, and race did play a part in in what made her. The person she was and you had the nerve to ask her along with starfleet to pretty much set up other people of her race yeah like and this wasn't betray just her own kind yeah betray her own kind and it well race this is when race actually makes sense because she is an earth an earth uh earthling right she is of another race actually mm-hmm. being bajoran but not only that but the bajorans were enslaved so you're asking me to go after my people who have been just come out of being unfairly. It's not like the Bajorans came out and attacked uh, the Cardassians. No, they just were attacked for existing. Yeah. And you came at her and told her that she would have to go after them and take them down like and to not understand that that's you know like the impact that would have on somebody who's going through something like that and she grew up out of slavery so to to come out of that and not understand why she did what she did if anyone has the 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 reason you know if there's any reason I would understand for joining the maquis it's definitely ro like oh, yeah. when when editing did it, he did it because he just wanted to be, he knew he would never be more than security, right? 
So part of it was he just wanted to be a hero. And he would never be great. He would never be the great hero that a Kirk, Picard, Cisco would be. He just couldn't. He just couldn't. He never was in situations where he would ever be more than than who he was. And that's why he did what he did. Mm -hmm. He was privileged. He came from privilege and was just like, I want I want to be the hero of the story. And he thought <laughs> the easiest way for me, the hero of the story is to join the marquee. Well, and, and is it, it's, it just occurred to me, um, and I don't know if this has ever been talked about on Star Trek within Star Trek itself, but, mm -hmm. uh, you, the, the irony of the, of Starfleet, the Federation fighting against the Borg who want to take you into the collective and make everything the same. Yeah. And, uh, to, to compare that to the Federation and Starfleet mm -hmm. and the Maquis, the people who don't want to be Kira live had to under call them on that. There were many arguments Kira has had over the the course, especially in the beginning seasons, where she was like, "Why would we want to go from being subjugated by one race to being subjugated by another? Even though you tell us you're giving us, you know, you're doing it for our best interest, but that isn't that what they all say? Helping them along, yeah." Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I I I, t I t totally agree with you. I mean, uh, the fact that that Picard's upset with Roe for you know you know quote unquote betraying him and the Federation and Starfleet and all that is just is just laughable. Yeah, it, it totally is. But but they do they do you know they talk through it and uh, then they have this little moment you know where Picard uh, you know he he realizes and he says. He, you broke my heart. Yeah. And it's not it's not about the the politics. It's 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 not necessarily about um a betrayal of an oath, you know, and a Starfleet oath. Yeah. It's like it's, she did time. She had to go to jail, like she was like put in prison, right? And had to earn her way out. And the first thing you have the nerve to say, and you pretty much disowned her, and the first thing you have to say to her is I broke your heart. <laughs> wow. As you sat on your little vineyard, you know. Well, and and she she reveals that she she turned herself into Starfleet. Yeah, it wasn't like they came after her and captured her. No. She's she's like, okay, once once the whole Maquis thing was done, uh, then she's like, you know, I, I, you know, she she did exactly what 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 Picard would counsel her to do or yeah. or want her to do it was only about that's what i mean by i i i'm sorry but i i feel the, the maquis were right like oh and yeah. we learned that from the dominion war that they were she only wanted to stop their cardassians from hurting more majorans that's it this wasn't a revenge thing this wasn't some power fantasy that she had and when it was done when and there was no need for the maquis because they, you know, well, they had killed so many of them. But when that battle was over, that's it. She turned herself in. Mm -hmm. She wanted, she wants to be in Starfleet. She could have said F Starfleet. Like, they don't have to, she didn't yeah. have to have a job in Starfleet to survive. She could have went on and did something else. That's what I mean. Uh, you know, Picard just is, he's not very self-aware of, of certain things. And I, and I totally get it because it's, it's, it's emotional and, it's the and, Rafi problem. Yeah. Also, it's mm -hmm. the Rafi problem. Like not everybody came from the same experiences he does. And sometimes he has a harder time. It seems to be like the closer they are to him, he has a blind spot. But when it's strangers, he seems to be understanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, that, and how many times have us have been in those situations, right? Where you're they're more, your parents are more forgiving for your friend or somebody doing something. And when you think about even thought about doing something like that, they'd be all over you. You just know. But, you know, or with your grandkids, right? Your parents are a lot easier forgiving with your grandkids than they are with you. Yep, that's true. Yeah. You ever thought of doing some of the stuff your, your kids do with your, with your parents? You'd be like, what? I'd still be on punishment. Yeah. But at least, uh, so, you know, like I said, they had this, this, this moment, you know, you broke my heart and you broke mine, she says, I love and, it, man. And, and they can, now they can trust each other. And, and even, they, the, even a look of almost tears in her eyes. Oh like, my God. She is so good. She's, so, she's is, such yeah. a great actor. I have loved her, um, 
before she was on Star Trek. I can't remember yes. where I first saw her, but I was like, she's amazing. She is just an amazing actress, man. She yeah. just has always, she's always been so strong. She wears stuff in her eyes. Like they're like just in the eyes and the face. She knows how to play it. Yeah. When she's in, 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 in a scene and you got, you got, I mean, you're Patrick Stewart is no schlub, right? But you really, she makes you level up. That's another thing where I, I always enjoyed about watching the character of Vincent Rowe with, with Picard, because there's certain actors that make him level up, like make, you know, that make him have to dance. Mm hmm. When, when they perform and she does that for him, like you could tell they, they love it. And I just wish they had gotten more time. You know, I wish she'd always come back or something like they did something more with the, with her character in him. So, so Ro, uh, once they've, once the veil has been dropped and they, they realize they can trust each other. That's, this is when we, she confirms for us what we've been hearing uh, all along through this, yeah. this season is that, uh, she she believes that changelings have been filtrated Starfleet in all levels, replacing key personnel. Uh, she she's she's convinced there are more on the Intrepid. She can't trust the ship's captain. She says, and she doesn't trust the transporters. And uh, and I and when I first saw this, or, or you know, she's explaining this, and we, and we see this what happens in this episode regarding the shuttle that they brought over. I thought, oh well, that's just a this is just a plot contrivance, right? Uh, for yeah for something that happens that we'll talk about. Um, but it actually turns out to be foreshadowing for something that we'll talk about in a future episode, mm-hmm. which I thought now I think, wow, that's, that was pretty brilliant. So, and then, uh, uh, Ro decides, I forget now, Daryl, do you remember why is it, why did she decide to, Oh, Oh, I remember I confirm for, uh, confirm this for me. Mm. She decides she's going to go back to the Titan and she's going to buy them time. She's left. So they basically have taken uh, most of the crew off of the Titan. Yeah, they, this is how they kind of, I don't know, it makes you feel like they're like, oh, this is how you save money. You take the crew, <laughs> you take some of the actors off, <laughs> right? And this is how to explain it. You you know, she's, they're, they're transferring the crew over, right? So you let them take the less, what do you call it when they're, the, the incense, right? You assume mm-hmm. it'd be like more of the incense and stuff. You take them the, the over, non-essentials. The non-essentials. You take them over to the back to the um, to uh, to the ship to the other, you know, to the ship she came on, and then uh, from there she'll stall, right, to give them time to get away. That that was yeah, the plan. Yeah, right? I, that's she, right. She, and she knew probably more than that. Probably they know. Like by not taking Picard, like when she decided to not take Picard and she told those two officers that she wasn't going to take him, that's, you know, she knows that she's probably dead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so yeah, they do that. And then we get uh, the scene. (laughs) So she's on the shuttle. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's been sabotaged. And and we find out that that the, the two... The two officers that were with her are changelings, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, she was right. <laughs> Ro yeah, was right. She was right. Um, and she can't, there's no, there's no, they, they can't beam her off. Uh, and so she, she pilots the shuttle uh, to the Intrepid's, one of the uh, Intrepid's nacelles and, and, the, and the, the shuttle blows up, giving, giving them a chance to escape. And of course she had already told Picard, you need to go, you need to, you need to, you need to fix this essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, that was, I, how, so how did you take, how did you take that sacrifice, that, that, that scene, that moment, uh, with, 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 uh, with Ro? Wow. I have to say I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. My first reaction was I was pissed. Like for me, I'd be like, I want her alive at the end of this. And I thought it would have been cool to have her with Worf, Worf and uh, Raffi because that was the connective tissue. Exa- right. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Have them go do do their thing. Right. Conti- continue to do their thing. And then Picard and the others would do their thing. This is probably if we've gotten like 15 episodes. Mm, mm-hmm. We could have had something like that. Um, you know, plus we haven't really had a 
mm, a sacrifice. No. Yet. And that's, and so and this is, is, we're halfway through now. Right. And we get the first sacrifice. And, and it's, of course, it's a, it's a character that was on the next generation for several episodes. Mm-hmm. And they reconciled. So that means, yeah, good. that's true. Right. There's no conflict is over. Kind yeah. Of, kind yeah. Of thing. Narratively that, that just, that just is great storytelling because and he still didn't forgive her yet like th- i mean even with this he was still judgmental like he's still was oh like, until the end yeah yeah because yeah. yeah uh one of the things that that they say to or rose says to picard is that you never saw my heart or something yeah. or you never saw me he didn't he's he didn't because he would have never asked her to do this because even right. Riker had said at one point in that episode where she her last episode as Ensign Row before this, like, I don't know if that's a good idea to put her in a situation like this. <laughs> like, right? And Bakar was just like, oh, no, number one. This is, you know, she'll, she's a Starfleet officer. She will do as she's told kind of thing. Like, yeah. but you have to be like, yo, Bakar, they're human, though. Like, these people, not you know, like, it's hard to say human when you're everybody's aliens, right? But they're, you know, they're living beings with feelings, right? They're, like, they're not just robots that don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Riker kind of understood that more than right than Picard because Riker was able to have a family, right? Picard kind of, you know, you, you still, Picard could be so set in his ways about things. Uh, we know his background, so we get it. So he still didn't understand. He still just sat there on this whole, you know, she should have did what I told her to do. Like, like a parent, like a parent that's just not hearing their kid. Right. It's- but, but at least he does at the end, right at the end, right before the, well, the- she did the most starfleet thing you could ever do. And that was that exactly. conflict. He didn't get that. She was someone dedicated to starfleet. Yeah. You or know, at least, but starfleet at least the ideals always of right. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was. And, but the problem with him is, like, and he didn't, he was, yeah, he should have learned his lesson with the whole thing with the Romulans, right? Where Starfleet went against its principles, right? By not help, helping the Romulans. So you would think when this came up, you would, but again, how many times have we said, do as I say and not as I do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so he just didn't see it until she, sadly, till she sacrificed herself just to give them time to get away. Yeah. I mean he even says even he even says before she ultimately does sacrifice herself that that he sees her. Yeah, he never he said he never saw her until this moment, I think something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, at least at least there's a um a finality to their conflict. Yeah. Well, he that was his I'm an old fool. Right? Yeah, that yeah. was his that was his scene of being like, I am an old fool, you know, sitting on my little principles. <laughs> you know, he has a lot of these. He he had that same uh, realization about Jack uh, in that yeah. flashback. He realized, mm-hmm. oh, that was that kid that asked me that question all those years right. ago. Mm-hmm. And now he has it with Roe and he had it with Riker. It's just like it's, <laughs> the older he's getting, yeah. even though he has a positronic brain now, yeah. the older he gets, the the uh, the less. Uh, Aware, I think maybe is the right term. Uh, he is of these relationships and situations mm-hmm. that he's in with with these other people. Right when they caught when they could get you, you know, with, like the first time you're, you know, one of your kids ever said, you know, d- debated with you on something and they were right. Right, mm. it's an amazing feeling when you look at this, you know, this this person that you that wasn't alive when you were, you know, like there was a time this this person was not even alive. And now they are able to not only come up with the situation and think about it and, you know, and, and talk to you about it and come up with a point that you have not even thought of, right. You think you'd be on the, you know, we've run the earth long enough. Us old heads. We think we know everything. Sometimes we do get caught up in that. And then for somebody younger to explain, to, to, to hit you with a, with a thing of logic that goes, you, wow, they are absolutely right. Yes. Yeah, it's it's oh, it's funny you say that because I I recently had a situation with my daughter mm-hmm. in, in which she she opened my eyes to something um, uh, that I was not even really aware of. Right, and I'm like, 
oh my God. Yeah. She's 20 years younger than I am. And mm-hmm. she's like, she j- she was just amazing in that moment. Yeah. Da- that's the thing with, with daughters too. Like, da- like there's an insight that they have, right? Being a uh, female that we don't, we don't have that. And so they can come at a situation and be like, and hit you with something. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> that is so right. <laughs> I never even thought of it that way. Yeah. Right. There's so much you can learn from them. Yes. You know, when we listen, right? and, you know, to draw, to bring it back to, to the, to the episode. I mean, that, that is that again, that's, it that's hit that father daughter relationship. It hit him analogy. so hard. Like when he looked at Riker, he was hurt. Yeah. Like I sat on these stupid principles for all these years and we could have reconciled years ago. Yes. The, the regret. Yeah. I, that exactly. regret. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he had a much more, he had a much, yeah, a, a much fuller relationship with Roe, regardless of the situation mm-hmm. than he, than he's had with Jack so far. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I almost kind of wish they would have played up that whole, uh, father daughter angle just a little bit more. I uh, the thing again, 10 episodes. You yeah, that's get true. 10. Very Even true. if we got 13, we could have <laughs> did a little bit more, right? Yeah. You only get 10. That's the problem of these shortened, you know, it's a good thing in in, in a lot of times, but also uh, a bad thing in terms of there you know, sometimes these stories could use a little bit of room mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. kind of do a little bit more than that and we We'll never get that, right? We'll never get those That's uh, conversations that we could have had if they had gotten an episode or two to work together, right? If she died, even if they still killed her later. Yeah. We still could have got a little bit. That, exactly. That's that's all I was wanting was like, you know, one more, more one more one more mm-hmm. centric episode between the two of them. And, yeah. And, yeah, that would have been. A little bit but, more. but, you know, at least uh, they still did a great job of of uh exploring that dynamic after right. all these years of the, the 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 two characters and the actors being apart and then coming together to to tell this wonderful if they evening. didn't do a good job with this then we wouldn't care that she came exactly. back and she, and she died right <laughs> we wouldn't even be talking about it we'd be like oh yeah it was a nice little cameo eh, yes yeah. exactly she did she, yeah uh, michelle forbes did not come back for just a quick cameo no, you know, when and so she that's, that's is awesome. gone, when that ship blows, it it affects it. It quieted the room mm. for me. Like mm. it just the story, just the impact of the story, just hit me from watching it. Like that's that's how good it was. Yeah, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. That was so. Who <laughs> it begs the question now? Mm. Who, who, what other characters from Star Trek: Next Generation's past are we going to see? Yeah, the remaining that's the episodes. Thing, right? So that'll be fun to explore as we get to that. Will they be cameos or will they just <laughs> exactly, be, or will they be have impact? <laughs> right, that's that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're, we're I think we're just about done with this, but we do need to talk a little bit more about the changelings. Um, yes. Beverly is doing an autopsy on uh, the changeling that Seven killed mm-hmm. in the previous episode. Uh, is that right? Or is this, I, I'm forgetting. Yes, it is. It, yeah. Cause it was, cause they, uh, they had to, they were still escaping the nebula. Did and... we get to Jack doing his thingy? Not, not yet. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to talk about that next, but I, I okay. want to start with the changelings. So yeah, we find out changelings are a little different. They're not, they, they, there's no DNA, but they're able to mimic, uh, blood and organs and, and until they get down to like destroying, uh, the, the, the matter down at the very small level. So and basically, the the revelation is is that anybody can be a changeling, they and they can't tell, right? Which so is like, no more well, blood then, tests. Uh, yeah. How do you do stuff. this? Yeah, how do you how do you get through this? How do we stop them now? So it just it just and that's that uh, that was explained um, uh, before even before Roe, I think mm-hmm. uh, talked to Picard about the changeling infiltration in Starfleet. Yeah, Beverly, yeah, because they had cut to like Beverly was learning this stuff while he was talking to okay, yeah. Ro. Mm-hmm. And then we get it after they reconciled. And then like you were saying, uh Jack, you know, because they're the changelings uh so they beamed off of the, the shuttle 
back onto the Titan, changed into different forms Mm -hmm. because they're still after Jack. Yeah. They're still after the asset. And and so uh, they actually do run into him just kind of (laughs) out of the blue. He's walking down the corridor and there they are. Um, And they're they're about ready to, to transport him over. And then we get a new thing with Jack. It's not just that he has these visions and the red door and 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 the tendrils or whatever. Yeah, he becomes uh, Jason Bourne. He be- yes, exactly. <laughs> that's a good. That's great. Yeah, he he suddenly his eyes flash red and then right. he takes out. Well, there's there's more than there's more than there's two. four of them. Yeah, there's, there's four, four of them, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, he t- he takes them out Jason Bourne style. He and then laser blasts. I'm like, how do you dive phaser fire? You could do that too. I was like, what the hell is going on with this dude? Oh, oh. Speaking of phaser blast, this sorry, a little aside. Um, do you miss the 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 single stream phasers like that we used to have, or do you yeah, are I mean, you okay with the the bullet like? That's uh, fine, but there's not <laughs> there's just nothing as great as seeing those phaser phaser you know coming at. In a battle, I love the phaser fire stuff. I always love that stuff. Yeah, it's science fiction. That's the point, right? Yeah. I don't want it to be. If I wanted to look at people shooting guns at each other. I just watch regular shows. Well, I guess we could thank J.J. Uh, Abrams for that, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, so Jack is able to take out four changelings because of whatever this is. So it's not right. just. It's like I said. It's not just him having these visions. Now they're they're actually affecting him. Making him do things that he could not normally do. So right. what does that mean? We still don't know. Very strange, and he's still not really telling anybody. Well, it's, it's funny you say that, because so this this whole time where he's having these visions, that we, we're, we're seeing Jack have these visions, I'm like, why isn't he talking to his doctor mom exactly about all this stuff? But at, to their credit, they do have a scene with Jack and Beverly. Finally, yeah. And, and uh, he... He talk. He's he's he. Uh, I think the end. The uh, I think the end. The episode with him about to reveal some of this information, uh, and we do find from Beverly uh, talking about how he has been affected. His sleep has been affected since he was a boy, mm-hmm. and so uh, we. It's been going on longer than we think, right? That's or, a, that's or, or that a, we thought here. Another clue that this is yes. not something that just happened to exactly. him. Exactly. So yeah, it's like they're la- layering on the mystery little bit by little bit, and right. I'm I'm loving it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, I I think I've gone through most of my notes, Daryl. Is there anything else that you wanted to? Uh, well, touch I, on I do either? have to go back to the t- just the row thing. With, okay, with, where she tells him that she wished they had known each other, and the t- man when she teared up when she said that. And the exchange of the of the earring because the whole thing when oh, she yes. first came on the ship, the Enterprise, many moons ago, is that she would wear the earring the wrong way. Shush, boy, it's okay. She would wear the earring the wrong way to be like defiant in a way, right? About the you know the the dress code, they, mm-hmm. you know, and and that was I always kind of thought that was so not Starfleet to tell people that they couldn't wear, yeah. Uh, you know, religious uh, jewelry from their planet when Starfleet is supposed to be about, you know, our differences being together. Like, why would they take that away from you? You know, they even let Worf wear the sash. So why would that be a big deal? Good point. Yeah. So... That always kind of got so it was a thing to to bring that back and have it where he didn't even catch what she was doing when she did it. At first, yeah. he thought he just thought it was just her giving him that, you know, this was something that mattered to her and, you know, sharing that with him mm-hmm. when she's saying goodbye. And he it didn't click what she was really doing. Yeah. Which which apparent which was and uh, again, Riker. Coming coming in to save the day, yeah. he he recognizes it immediately because right away. It, it is it is uh it's a, a, the the earring is is holding all this data. Her entire investigation is is uh, all the files are are yep. in in that earring. So then they then that you know so now they have more information about what's going on. 
Right, right. Again, because Picard is not looking at it from, from a father's eyes, right? He doesn't have that baggage with her. Ah, uh, see, now here I was just thinking that um, that whole thing about uh, not seeing her and, and, uh, no, you know, Riker. He, he can't, he can't see past what that earring symbolized to her back then. Right. To, Riker to, saw her. Yeah. Yeah. Riker saw her. Like, even remember the last time she was a Starfleet officer is when she was with Riker. And when she told Riker she was sorry, you know, and to tell mm-hmm. Picard, he got it. Yeah, didn't Riker even say to Picard uh, in this episode is like, you know, because Picard was just going off on row and he mm-hmm. Riker was like, that was 20 years ago. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> even even in that in that exchange, he was like, yeah, she did break the rules, but he understood why she did it. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just too caught up in your, you know, and how you wanted her to be your perfect soldier right you wanted her to be your perfect starfleet officer like that was your project like you put her together but you forgot there's someone inside (laughs) that might not agree with everything that you agree with right Uh, and so Riker saw her like he always kind of he got it he understood why and he wasn't angry when they left like that I always thought that that was that was a cool thing with Riker is that he was able to. He is not so rigid. That's the difference with Riker. He's yeah, not yeah. as rigid as Captain <laughs> as Picard is. Right. Yes. He kind of understands more uh, with people, and he learned that. You know, he learned that when he lost Deanna. Right, being so rigid, he learned that from that loss, and I think that's something that stuck with him for being that dude. Mm-hmm. You know, they're always like, oh, I'm right about everything and I'm a, you know, and I'm a Starfleet officer and that's all that matters. And then, then he had to kind of grow up and he kind of learned, you know, there's Starfleet, yes, but there's also more, you know, to life than just that. And, mm-hmm. and that's why he's been more, I think, open with people, you know, and he's had the relationships he's had. I think, uh, you know, we're five episodes in. And I'm I'm saying right now, uh, Riker is the MVP of this series. He's up there. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think he's, well, he's, he's up there. We'll have sure. to we'll have to revisit that perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> as we go along. He makes you. He always when I see him, I'm like, damn, why didn't you act? Why don't you act more? Yeah, like I know you direct a lot, but I'm like, I'm like, it's it's a shame because he's he's also a very good actor. So it's like. We we are missing out on not having more of you know his performances in front of the screen. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I'm not art. Like I I could I could go with you on that. Like I, <laughs> I definitely could. I have to get to the end though before I could say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. How I feel, but for now it's like yeah, it's just he's doing some great. He's doing some great stuff. With his character. Uh, anything else on Roe? Uh, only that I hate all of you that came to the decision to kill her character off. <laughs> and I will miss that character oh, tremendously. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that. But they did some amazing work with just a short amount of time on this episode she's mm-hmm. well, and and uh you know a, a small amount of screen time yeah. for for the character yeah yeah people are jogging she is doing a sprint like she is <laughs> like like she just is that good like yeah. it didn't take her a lot she didn't have to get a lot of material but what she did in just a small amount of, of time mm-hmm. with the impact is felt throughout the entire episode yeah, it's it, I, I can almost forgive uh, Terry Metalis and and the the production staff uh, for for do well not just for that but but just you know <sighs> revisiting old Star Trek tropes and yeah, uh, yeah. whatnot. You know, we talked about the Star Trek two connections, right, right? And all that stuff. It's just like they they keep the the the, the nostalgia aspect of it, I guess. 
But this was more than that. It was it was a definite continuation mm-hmm. of the character and the relationship between the two characters. Yeah. And it wasn't just a, oh, look, it's nice to see, like you said, a cameo. It was nice to see that character. Oh, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> it's It had a lot of resonance to it, and I, it that, I, that I really appreciate. Yeah, it really did. All right. Uh, any last words, Daryl? No, I think that's, I think we have done our diligence in this, in these two episodes, and I'm ready for next one to discuss the next two because it's crazy. Yes, it gets, yeah, from here, it just, they really ramp it up, don't they? They do. Yes, they do. (laughs) Uh, So I'm looking forward to talking to you about that. Me too. Okay, well, thank you again, Daryl, for uh, joining me on uh, on this on this quest to talk about Star Trek: Picard season three as as the episodes go along. Um, uh, it's it's it continues to be a lot of fun, and yeah, uh, I, love uh, I I hope it's that way for our listeners as well. Me too. Uh, but you know, you don't just talk about Star Trek with me; you also talk about a lot of other things. Uh, where can they find you to to listen to you talk about DC Comics and uh, uh, other popular media things and other things that you have. Well, you can you can hear me on uh, DC All Stars to talk about all things DC, uh, present you know, uh, new stuff and and past um, with my co-host Hassan and uh, and Peter, uh, and also on Gotham by Geeks, uh, you can hear us talk about the world of Batman uh, on that podcast, and for TV and movies just in general. Uh, you can hear me uh, with my co-host, my very funny co-host, Donnie Salvo, the comedian, uh, where we have a lot of fun talking all that stuff. So, yeah, you can check all that stuff out on the Taylor Network of Podcasts.com. And I've got, uh, of course, I have links in the show notes for 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 that website and also for how you can contact Daryl on on Twitter and whatnot. And uh, uh, people can always uh, send feedback and contact me uh, by sending email to longboxreview at gmail.com. And uh, all those links, all those contact links are also in the show notes. So if you decide you'd like to, uh, you know, give me a give me a call or send me a, a text message, then all that information is is in the show notes as well, as well as the website. And with that, um, uh, thanks for listening. And uh, Daryl and I will talk Star Trek Picard Season 3 again very soon. <laughs>